this is Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to be going over a nursing assessment of the cranial nerves, cranial nerves 1 through 12. And if you would like to watch a complete head-to-toe nursing assessment, you can access this card up here in the corner or in the YouTube description below to watch that video. So the first thing what you want to do is you want to provide privacy to the patient, perform hand hygiene, and explain what you will be doing. So let's get started. And we're going to test the olfactory cranial nerve one, the sense of smell. So Ben, what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you close your eyes and I'm going to put something in front of your nose and have you breathe in and smell and you tell me what you smell. And whenever you do this, use something that's pleasant smelling, not something that's really stinky because it could elicit like a gag reflex or something like that if the person has a sensitive nose. Okay? Vanilla. Okay, and this was vanilla extract, and that is correct. So that cranial nerve is intact. To test cranial nerve two, you're gonna be doing two tests. Number one, you're gonna look at the confrontation visual field, and you're gonna be looking at their peripheral vision. Next, you'll be looking at visual acuity and using a Snellen chart to assess that. First, we're going to test the peripheral vision by doing the confrontation visual field test. And to do that, you're gonna have the patient stand in front of you about arm's length away. Okay, Ben, what I'm gonna have you do is I'm going to have you cover up your right eye and I'm also going to cover up my left eye so on the same side and Ben I want you to look at this eye and don't look at my fingers okay and I just want you to tell me how many fingers you see and you're going to do this in the upper and lower visual fields and about the middle of the visual field so here we go two correct three very good. Okay, let's sit on the opposite. Again, stare at this eye, okay, and don't look at my fingers. Three, one. Very good. Now we're going to test visual acuity using a Snellen chart. And what you're going to do is you're going to have your patient stand about 20 feet from the chart. So Ben, if you'll stand about right there for me and ask your patient, do you wear glasses? No. Okay, and if your patient does wear glasses, you'll want them to wear those for this test. Okay, so what we're going to do, look at that chart over there and try to read the lowest line for me that you can read, okay? okay. And first we're going to cover your right eye, then your left eye, and then we'll do both eyes, okay? So cover your right eye, okay, and what line can you read? Eight. Okay, read it for me. D, E, F, P, O, T, E, C. Okay, very good. Okay, now we're going to cover up your left eye and do the same thing. And again, whatever line you can read, let me know. Eight. Eight again, okay. D, E, F, P, O, T, E, C. Okay, and now read with both eyes. And what line? Eight. Okay. D E F P O T E C. Okay, and he read from line eight, so that means that he has 20 20 vision. And this means that he can see the same line of letters at 20 feet that a person with normal vision can see at 20 feet. However, let's say that in his left eye he could only read like line six, which is 20 30. That would mean that his left eye sees at 20 feet that a person with normal vision would see at 30. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to assess cranial nerve three, which is ocular motor, four, trochlear, and then six, which is abducens. And we're gonna do several tests to check their function. The first one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be looking for any involuntary shaking of the eye called nystagmus. And how we're gonna do that is we're gonna take our pin light, we're gonna hold it about 12 to 14 inches away from the patient's nose. And Ben, what I want you to do is keep your head still, don't move your head, and just use your eyes to watch where I move the pin light. And as you're doing this, you're going to do, you're going to perform it in the six cardinal fields of gaze. And you're just going to move it and you're looking for any involuntary shaking of the eyes. So here we go. Mm. 
Next, we're gonna see how reactive the pupils are to light. And to do that, we're gonna dim the lights a little bit and we're gonna have the patient stare off at a distant object that helps dilate those pupils. And then we're gonna shine using our pin light in at the side and we're gonna see how that pupil responds. It should constrict. And then on the other side, it should constrict as well. So say their baseline pupil size was like three millimeters, it should go down to one milliliter and it should happen on both sides. Okay, so Ben, stare off at that object right on the wall over there for me. Okay, and that dilates the pupils and we're just gonna shine light in at this side. Okay, constrict, constrict. Okay, let them dilate again and then go to the other side, do the same again. And they both constricted in equal size. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna check for accommodation. And how we do that is we turn the lights back on. We just previously had them dim, but we now make it light again. We're gonna have him stare off at a distant object that helps dilate the pupils. And we're gonna take a pin light. You can use a pin light finger and you're just gonna slowly move it inward to the nose. And what you're looking for is that those pupils constrict, they accommodate and the eyes cross while looking at the pin light. So, here we go. Stare off in the distance, please. And I don't want you to move your head or anything. Just keep it real still and just follow this pin light, okay? Ready? Okay. So now we can document, because we just checked all of the things with the eyes, we can document that the pupils are equal, round, reactive to light, and the accommodate. So that's where that acronym P-E-R-R-L-A comes into play. We're gonna go ahead and test cranial nerve five, which is the trigeminal nerve. And this nerve is responsible for many things like mastication. So what I'm gonna have you do, Ben, is I'm gonna have you clench your teeth, like bite down for me. And I'm going to feel the masseter muscle, which is right there, and it should be a nice firm ball. And then feel the temporal muscle. Now what I'm gonna to do to also test that nerve is have him try to open his mouth against resistance. So try to do that for me. Okay, and he can do that. And while we're here, we're gonna go ahead and look at the facial expressions and test cranial nerve seven, which is the facial nerve. So can you close your eyes tightly for me and open them up? Okay, now smile for me, frown, and puff out your cheeks. Okay, and he did that with E, so that cranial nerve is intact. Next, we're gonna test cranial nerve eight, which is the vestibulocochlear nerve. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna include one of his ears and then whisper two words on the other side. He needs to tell me what I said. So, you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna include this one. Apple, banana. Apple, banana. Okay, very good. Cat dog. Okay, and that nerve is intact. Next, what we're gonna do is we're going to assess cranial nerve nine, the glossopharyngeal. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have you say ah, and what you want is that uvula to move up. Ah. Uh, okay, and then we're just gonna test the gag reflex. I'm sort of just gonna poke a little bit back there and elicit a gag reflex. Okay, there you go, <laughs> gag's really good. And, um, <laughs> Cranial nerve 10, the vagus is intact because he's able to talk with talk to me without hoarseness and he's able to swallow. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna test cranial nerve 11, which is the accessory nerve. So Ben, what I'm gonna have you do is move your head side to side, up and down, okay? And then shrug, try to shrug against my resistance. And he does that with ease, so that nerve is intact. Next, what we're gonna do is we're going to assess cranial nerve 12, which is the hypo glossal nerve, and what I'm gonna have you do, Ben, is I'm gonna have you stick out your tongue and move it side to side. Okay, and he does that with ease. Okay, so that wraps up how to perform a nursing assessment of the cranial nerves. And don't forget to check out that head to toe nursing assessment video. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos.